What up boys? Today we're gonna to be talking about this Incinerate Sork build that I'm going to attempt to beat every uber boss in the game with on hardcore. You heard that right, Incinerate. So let's get into this deep dive. So we'll start off on the gear and skills page, then move to the skill tree, Paragon, and then we'll talk about the weaknesses that I felt so far because I am currently level 45 with this build. So first off, we have Aspect of Fortune on Helmet. We wanna increase our lucky hit chance as much as possible for what's coming next. Aspect of Disobedience is the single strongest defensive aspect in the game, especially for Sork because they're pretty lacking on armor. You're gonna want the Aspect of Shattered Stars for your Meteor procking that's gonna be coming from your enchantment, and this is gonna be important as well. We're gonna take Ever Living Aspect in order to take less damage from crowd controlled or vulnerable enemies, and we're looking for the vulnerable enemies part here because we're gonna be using the Accursed Touch Vampiric Power, and we'll touch on that more later. We're gonna use the Ghost Walkers Aspect because while unstoppable and for four seconds after, you can freely move through enemies and you gain unstoppable from both flame shield and teleport and they're pretty helpful to just smooth out the movement in the build when you're walking around then we're going to take aspect of engulfing flames because i think it's really really good now i'm not sure how good but i think it's really good when i played it on my firewall sork it pretty much guaranteed a kill on any trash mob that i just walked by that i had i put down a firewall and then i walked away and then it died like three seconds later so. Aspect of conflagration we want on our necklace because this is gonna be our highest multiplicative damage that we get. And we're gonna be using two one-handed weapons, so we're not actually gonna be able to put this on a staff. While channeling incinerate, your burning damage is increased by, we're gonna go for 60% multiplicative damage. That's a big number. On our first ring, we're gonna have more damage while we have a barrier active because we are always going to have a barrier active. And then on the second ring aspect, we're gonna get some resource regeneration and this is really good because damage from pyromancy skills, lucky hit chance to regain 10 mana. Your enchantments count as pyromancy skills. Your ultimate counts as a pyromancy skill. Hell, even flame shield counts as a pyromancy skill. And incinerates lucky hit chance is pretty crazy from my testing so far. We'll talk about that. It's very interesting. So we'll have infinite mana with this and we'll be able to respect some skill points later in order to get more damage. And then lastly, we'll get the aspect of intercom here because it's very good with how we're gonna be playing the build. We're gonna get as much tank as possible and then just hold incinerate down, baby. Just constantly hold it down. So this is gonna be really good. We're not gonna be moving much with this build. So down here we have the meteor enchantment and this has lucky hit for a chance to drop a meteor on enemies. And then we also have firewall enchantment, which gives us lucky hit to spawn firewalls, two of them. These two together are going to be proccing a lot. And if you think they're not gonna be proccing, watch the video I'm gonna put out tomorrow as a gameplay sample of what this incinerate build does. And you'll be like, oh wait, this is, this really works and it really works. It's kind of freaky. It, it, it's been freaking me out how good it's been working. Next up we have just Firebolt, you know, glinting Firebolt once in a while does a lot of damage. We have Flame Shield, we have Ice Armor. We can activate it while we're channeling Incinerate, same with Flame Shield. And so both of these are gonna help us min-max our damage essentially. And then Inferno is insane with any burning build. I've noticed it's really, 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 really good. And then Teleport, of course, mandatory. And then our beautiful, beautiful Incinerate. Oh yeah, and we'll talk more about it in a second. Down on your stat screen here, literally Literally, all you want is as much like hit chance as possible. You want it on helmet, gloves, amulet, both your rings, and both affixes you can get on your offhand. This is going to increase your total DPS by a large margin. It's like a tertiary multiplicative damage source, just getting more lucky hit, which is why Aspect of Fortune might actually be our highest damage aspect in this setup. Okay, I pick Amethyst because we're gonna be doing a lot of damage over time and both Firewall and Meteor both deal damage over time. And even Meteor's aspect here of Shattered Stars, you can see there they additionally burn enemies they hit for a certain amount of damage over six seconds. It's all damage over time. Next up we have Topaz because damage reduction while control impaired on Sork is 
one of the best. It feels really nice. I'll probably do two topaz and three rubies in the end setup, but because our unstoppable skills have a long cooldown, we're going to want the topaz so that like when they're down, we're still going to have some survivability. And then we'll take skulls and the jewelry because we'll have max all res as soon as we fill out our entire paragon board. And we'll have a lot of all res just going through the paragon board to start. So we don't need to worry about it too much. Next up, we have our vampiric powers. Bathe in blood is a must. I've tested this out so far and it feels really, really nice. And it activates mid incinerate. So if you're channeling incinerate and it procs and then you move away and then start channeling incinerate and then one, two, three seconds later, the cooldown comes off, then the pool goes beneath you. So it actively refreshes every second or like every moment that you're channeling incinerate. A cursed touch, lucky hit chance to apply vampiric curse on enemies. This is ridiculous because we're stacking lucky hit chance. So it's going to be easy to proc so everything is going to have a vampiric curse on it flowing veins is damage over time 60 percent damage multiplier is a big deal our targets are always either going to be moving or affected by a vampiric curse so it's good more damage to vulnerable enemies we want prey on the weak specifically because enemies are vulnerable while affected by a vampiric curse from your other vampiric powers so this actually gives us a 20 percent multiplier and a 16 percent multiplier when used after we have a cursed touch equipped and we are not using frost nova and so we don't have any other way to apply vulnerable which is a big enough damage multiplier that we want to guarantee that it's in the build rampart this is a not so important one. I feel I haven't been able to test it properly yet, but I feel like it's going to be really helpful, especially on bosses. So we're going to put it in there and there's not much else we can use. Next up, we got the skill tree. Of course, we want glinting firebolt. Of course, we want the damage reduction on incinerate because we're going to be taking a lot of damage. I can already attest to this. You take a lot of damage on this build. You want the potent warding because it's one of the strongest passives in the game. I like taking the mystical flame shield for the mana cost reduction until we get the incendiary aspect. Once we get the incendiary aspect, the mystical flame shield passive as well as the enhanced ice armor passive are pretty necessary for the leveling portion of the build. You could level as something else and switch over to this, but I'm trying to be true and stick with the single playstyle all the way. Next up, we got teleport because if you teleport and then immediately just start channeling, you're gonna have 30% damage reduction there and it's just really good. Of course, everyone uses teleport. We get glass cannon. Now this might confuse some of you because again, we're gonna be taking a lot of damage and this is gonna multiply that by 1.09, but it's really good. <laughs> it's really good. And that's why we go really defensive in the Paragon boards tree. And so we're allowed to actually take glass cannon. Next up, lucky hit chance. You want rank three mana shield because this, as long as you don't have any mana cost reduction, every four seconds you channel incinerate, mana shield procs, you spend 100 mana. You're going to have 100% uptime on this 21% damage reduction. And that's that's really good. Protection is going to be really good as well. It's going to get us more base health, essentially, to tank all these hits with because we're going to be standing still. And for now, we have rank 2 Meteor. Later on, when you get everything together, you'll take out those three points and you'll put them all into here. But for now, I'm going to keep it like this. And then you want the Immobilize from it because it's really good. And we're going to have rank 5 Firewall. This is the most important skill that you get early on with incinerate because you'll see in the gameplay sample tomorrow it procs so much it just procs a stupid amount of times especially since we're stacking lucky hit chance and i'm not even gonna have that much lucky hit chance tomorrow and you're gonna be able to see that it procs a lot and we'll talk about why in just a moment and then mage's firewall and enhanced firewall they're both really good inferno supreme inferno really helps prime inferno really helps and inferno really helps the pull from this also staggers bosses this makes pyromancy easy to, like it's all really good next up we want fiery surge because incinerate costs a lot of mana and so we're gonna want a lot of mana back and this pyre is super good of course anyone who's played a burning build before loves this passive it's really good and warmth the best passive in the entire sork skill tree when it comes to burning damage and then we'll want combustion because it's another source of multiplicative damage. Now, let's talk about why we're going lucky hit chance. This is a recent development. Before I tested out Incinerate, I thought it was just going to be straight damage because it does a lot of damage. But it turns out 
that the lucky hit chance from incinerate is per tick per enemy with no internal cooldown. So what I mean by this is it can proc multiple lucky hits at the same time as opposed to other skills, I'm guessing other non-channeled skills, can only proc lucky hit so many times per cast. Incinerate can proc lucky hit an infinite amount of times, it seems, per instance of burning damage. So, 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 so. Basically, if I'm hitting five enemies with Incinerate, I can proc all my lucky hits on all five of those enemies. It's crazy. And I've tested this out, and I was burning two enemies with Incinerate, and then four firewalls popped up instantly. And the enchantment summons two, so that's how I know it proc twice. They proc'd at the same exact time because I started burning those two enemies at the same exact time. So what my thought for this build is that Meteor is going to be able to do the same thing, obviously less often, but the same thing, and Firewall is going to be proccing so much. In fact, I think the best firewall build now is actually an incinerate build because it's how you cast more firewalls than just blank casting firewalls as if it was on your skill bar. I don't know what to say. This game keeps surprising me. It's pretty awesome. Let's move on to the Paragon board. This is a this is a second draft Paragon board. So I'm sure it's decent, but I'm probably going to be refining it before the gameplay example tomorrow. So I won't go too in depth on it, but it's gonna be in the build guide in the description below. So you're gonna be able to look at it for yourself, but just know everything here, I really want the damage reduction because it's just so necessary. Everything's gonna be burning so you can get all the burning damage reduction. Everything's gonna be vulnerable so we can get the best vulnerable damage reduction. Everything is gonna be burning as well. So we're gonna be able to deal increased burn damage and then it's interesting most of the time because of the passive here on incinerate you're going to want to be near enemies while you're channeling the skill and so i thought oh hey wait most of the time i'm taking damage is actually from close enemies so this is really good and also the damage is a hundred percent uptime for close enemies which we're going to be near the whole time because it's pretty important that's it's one of like a few skill caps for this build specifically is making sure you're getting that extra 25 percent burn damage a second because it's a lot it adds up to being around 150 percent burn damage every single second now for reference that's equivalent to six seconds of an enemy standing on a firewall so every second of incinerate is worth six seconds of firewall that's a it's a lot it's a lot and the fact that we're going to be proccing multiple firewalls and meteors i'm very excited for this build that's going to be it for me check back in tomorrow for the gameplay sample of incinerate and it's surprising how good it is i'll see you guys later have a good one stay safe out there